thank you to everyone who's bought training and thank you to the people who are about to buy training. And once again, shout out to the Nerd Tribe. In my video yesterday morning, I was talking about how black folks waste a lot of time focusing, concentrating, having two, three, four, five hour, six hour debates over topics that don't produce a return or a dividend. And I knew that many of you would come at me with the, you are not educated with the Bible. And here's some of my background. I grew up in Alabama and until about age 16, I was attending a Southern Baptist church. So I have read the Bible and reading, consuming and finding comfort in the Bible. If that's your thing, knock yourself out. I remember asking Reverend Prescott, where were the dinosaurs in the Bible? And he just like, boy, don't you be questioning God. And at that point, I realized that um, putting time into the Bible wasn't going to, to give me a return. Reverend Prescott at the time must have been 60 something, 65 years old. And um, I realized that if I was going to keep doing what I was doing, I was going to end up like Reverend Prescott. And unlike many of the people who were leaving these comments, because I don't know what it is with this thing about only studying things that are black, black history, black cultures. When I was a kid, I studied everything. Black culture, African culture, Greek, Roman, Jewish. I studied everything. And I knew that Virtually every culture had a situation where people were slaves. So work with me here, work with me here. Um, if we are God's chosen people, why have we been catching hell since we've been on the planet? See, <clears throat> here's my thing. God is love, God is mercy, God is abundance. I don't believe that God had anything to do with black folks being enslaved or white folks being enslaved or Ethiopians or Jewish or Greek. I, had, I don't think God had anything to do with that. I think that man and the intent of man had everything to do with slavery. I want you to think that someone thought it was cool to go to another country, capture people, put them in chains, take them across the sea, and force them to work for free. That is the epitome of evil. That is an evil mindset. Those are evil actions. That isn't God. That isn't love. And one of the things that I keep seeing is a lot of people like to claim that they are the chosen people. They like to claim that they were God's favorite people. And in this contest of who's being God's favorite people, what are the benefits what are the returns? What are the dividends? Now, one of the things that I consistently see, especially with black folks, is the pimping of church. And with the pimping of church, you have so much that goes on with the pimping of church, with the... Um, Use of church, because I had to say, I used to talk about this on the YouTube channel all the time, that church was some of the best game on the planet. <sighs> now, what do I mean when I say that church is some of the best 
game on the planet. Let's take social media now. There's a lot of people who are holding church to sell products. Who here is going to be a millionaire next year? Claim it. Who's here going to have six figures in their checking account next year? Claim it. That's church. And I've consistently seen black actors use church semantics to whip a crowd up in a frenzy because once again, I grew up in the South. I used to attend the Baptist church and for a long time, hearing a sermon provided comfort for me. And I started to grow out of that when I realized that there is no reward after you die. A lot of this is driven by you die, you go to heaven, you get your blessings from your heavenly father in the afterlife. And you have so many people who are living horrible, desperate, bad lives, all for that promise of a better life in the afterlife. And I feel, you know, I've never had a near death experience that I remember, so I don't know, but I feel that the life that you live here is going to influence the life that you have in the afterlife. So if you have a sucky, bad life here, more than likely, I think that's what's going to be in the afterlife. I don't think there's cookies and punch and prizes for a person who endured and went through a lot of things here on this earthly plane that they're going to be amply rewarded in the next life. I think it's this Muslim religion where you die and you get 21 versions and I once again, I don't, I, don't, I don't think any of that stuff happens. Now, I could be wrong because I've never died and I don't know. I never died and got reincarnated and came back. So I can't tell you what's on the other side. But I can tell you that literally everyone who is God's people, They've all been through some extremely messed up circumstances. The Jews who claim to be God's chosen people, the Israelites, the black Hebrews, all of these people are bucking for that position of being God's chosen person of people. It's like, these are God's people. Keep your hands off God's people. And what I see is a lot of stress and strife and I honestly do not believe that God is on that tip. Once again, your, your beliefs may be different than mine. Once again, I think God is love, abundance, peace, serenity, comfort. That's what I think of when I think of God. And all of these people, like once again, I have studied other cultures. I didn't just study black culture. I knew the Greeks were slaves, the Romans were slaves, black people were slaves, Jews were slaves. Everyone had a, a, a record of slavery in their background. And the per most pernicious slavery was black slavery because these European slave traders went to Africa and literally stole these people from their homeland, took them across the ocean and forced them to work for free. I will reiterate, that was evil. That had nothing to do with God. I don't think that God punishes innocent people. Once again, I'm going to say that. I don't think that God's like, well, because your great, great, great grandfather committed this sin, this is why everybody from him on down will be cursed. I don't think that God punishes 
innocent people. I just don't. I just that never really resonated with me because essentially you could be a kid that's born 100 years after your great great grandfather. And because of he committed sins, you're being punished. That that just never made no sense to me. That's just like that. That's just like literally walking around and slapping folks just because you feel like it. That, that, that makes no sense to me. Now, one of the things that I see is a fallacy with God's chosen people, because there's a reason that I'm on this, because the last video that I put up, a whole bunch of people chimed in a whole. I put it up at 430 in the morning, same time I put this video up. And that video was trending toward uh, being number one out of 10 because a lot of people were commenting. I think I awakened or activated a lot of people's um, sense of church, um, a lot of stuff that came into it. Because once again, I can say this, black folks are extremely spiritual. Uh, black folks are extremely religious and this is why a man on the stage in the suit holding the Bible with a rhythm and rhyme to his communication can literally have people feeling some kind of way because black folks appreciate church. And the fallacy with the chosen people, because once again, I'm not going to sit here and debate, are these people the chosen people? Because there may well, in fact, because like I said, I've never died. I don't know what's on the other side. I've never seen anything. And it just from a logical perspective, it never made sense to me. And all of these people who are bucking for the position of God's chosen people. Once again, if you look at the background of each group, there's been nothing but a horror show in the history of this group. I mean, it's funny. And also, once again, Egypt is not on the African continent, not Egypt, excuse me, Israel. It's close, but so is some of these other countries that are not on the African continent. And here's something else that's really, really funny. And I found this to be interesting. A lot of the people who present as Israelites or people from Israel are white. OK, and because Israel is close to Africa, Israel's hot with Egypt. Egypt is hot. And I'm just sitting there like, you know, maybe I need to do a little research to figure out how these white people got in the middle of a desert. Because if you look at Egyptians, they present brown. You look at people of Lebanon, they present dark. Iraqis, they present brown, swarthy, Afghanistan. But for some reason, these people in the middle of a heat wave are presenting as white. And it's very, very interesting. But that's a side. Um, this whole notion of being God's chosen people is a fallacy because you are literally sacrificing today for an undefined after death experience. I mean, this is me. This is me. I do believe in ghosts. I do believe in spirits. I believe my grandmother's spirit has spoken to me on several occasions. So there is more than on this plane. There is more than that. And I don't have all the answers and I don't know everything. But I do know that the bucking a position for God's chosen people is, to me, marketing. And what I mean by that, right now, being an entrepreneur and starting a successful business is literally the fastest path to wealth. Jeff Bezos became a billionaire from scratch in seven years. It's the fastest way to get rich. It's the fastest way to build wealth. However, the marketing department for the stock market has contaminated 
or has informed and shaped opinions that many people think that an investor who doesn't have a lot of money can become really, really rich in the stock market, deploying a small amount of capital in a very short period of time. This is a common belief that people can get rich rather quickly in the stock market, and it's simply not true. Can you get rich in the stock market? Absolutely. Over a long period of time, yes, you can. And that's the thing that I, I, I really see is interesting because there's so many people who are doing dividend investing, uh, they're investing in the stocks, and they're not really deploying a lot of capital. But once again, the marketing department has convinced people that false narratives ring true. And that's one of the things I think that's happening with God's people, God's chosen people, that these false narratives are ringing to be true because, I mean, once again, I'm not a religious person. So I don't walk around with a smile on my face knowing that I'm God's favorite child. I'm one of God's people. That does nothing for me. Maybe it does something for you. I don't know. But one of the big issues that I see is time focused on this stuff. Hear me. Where your time and attention is, is where your wealth is. So what do I mean by that? If you go ahead and you put time and effort into a utility, a, pro, a vocation that doesn't pay any dividend, like it's essentially the joke of the day degree. I got my bachelor's in black history. You spent four years studying a subject matter that is not going to put money in your pocket unless you want to start a church that's what i'm talking about um like once again i used to read the bible as a child and as an adult i don't read the bible because for me i understand the relationship between time and attention when you focus your time in an arena that doesn't have a yield, that doesn't have a dividend, you've wasted a lot of time. And there are people, like going back to my example of Reverend Prescott, even as a child, I realized that I did not want to be a 65 year old man sweating in an Alabama church on a hot Sunday in a cheap suit, believing in the gospel. I didn't want that for my future. And at the, I think I was, nine or 11 when I realized that I didn't want to end up like Reverend Prescott. Um, when I came to an understanding that at an early age, I, un what's going on? My name is Glendon Cameron and I want to introduce you to the corporate game. What is the corporate game? The corporate game is a collegiate level educational portal that will teach you how to have your best version of your life. I got a question. What would you do if you had the money that you needed to have the life that you wanted to have? And for the average American, an additional $3,000 per month makes a huge, huge difference. So this is the collegiate level corporate game, teaching you things about business, money, corporate structures, business credit, all of that, plus a lot more. Now here is the deal. You can start a business. You can do it with the right level of training and the right level of execution. And here's the thing that you have to understand. Starting this business is going to take time. I know that we are in a situation where every day you're hit over the head with 
information saying that you can take this course, you can hack this, and you can literally quit your job in 30 days. This isn't that. You can do it, but it's gonna take time. And one of the things is, and this is something that I never hear anyone talking about, is that you have to change who you are to go ahead and to set up a situation where you can become a corporate citizen. Now, what's a corporate citizen? A corporate citizen is a person through a job or a combination of businesses that makes $250,000 per year. At this level, you can get rich. You can become a millionaire within 10 years following this blueprint. And that's what we give you in the corporate game what it is and how to play. So if you wanna sign up, if you want to be a millionaire within the next 10 years, go ahead, sign up for the corporate game. The link is in the first comment.